Guys, welcome everybody. It is Tuesday night and we are in a series about how to reboot your keto journey. Uh, this is week four. On first, the first week we taught you how to start the keto diet. The second week we talked about the price you pay for keto and more importantly the price we pay when we aren't keto. Uh, that third week, last week we talked about the, the importance of satiety and that magical moment when you miss a meal. And tonight, oh yeah, we're taking a time out. We are pushing pause for the progression because there are usually a lot of folks by that third and fourth week of a ketogenic diet that are saying, I don't wanna do it, I, I can't do this, I I I'm screwing it up. So if you have bombed your reboot, we're gonna talk about some of my favorite ways about how I've rescued my <laughs> reboots, but I, I also uh, talk to patients and what their reboots look like when they need a hand. So I think you'll find it valuable even if you haven't fallen off. I just wanna make sure you guys can hear me. Um, it does look like you can hear me, so awesome. And uh, I love to see where you guys are at, uh, so thank you for putting in your locations. Uh, it is fun to see all those that tune in. Uh, it is one version of our support that we try to provide here on the Dr. Boz channel, which is Tuesday nights. Uh, as we talk, there is a team of folks taking in your questions from these uh, comments, and we will post the questions that are really relevant to reboots or some sometimes just some really good questions that we take care of at the end. But if you're trying to get a question answered by me, this is the best place to do it. So we're going to go on with some traditions before we do that. The first thing is, is I am very data driven. If you've read any of the books or done any of this following, you'll know that, yeah, I, I grew up on a farm and I'm very practical. I like to translate this information into very useful uh, tidbits, but there's data behind it. <laughs> I like to point out that farmers use GPS for planting. Uh, there's a lot of science behind what goes on in some uh, in the keto diet, but also in farming, and those are where my roots are. I actually had, I, I can't complain about weather now that I'm living in Tampa. You couldn't complain about it in South Dakota either, but uh, these are my ketone strips, just showing you that I'm measuring that here. Um, and it, it rained all day today, and it's a chilly, so I actually turned on the heat around here, <laughs> which is weird in Florida to turn on the heat if you ask me, but all right, ketones 3.7. I could have told you I was doing that good. Um, I don't know how you're going to raise those with ketone supplements as I drink them throughout the show, but we'll see what happens. So yeah, 3.7, I, I do feel really good. I've had a really strict fast. We're going to go through a couple of things that I fast every week. I used to start the show on Sundays at the beginning of my fast and then post my numbers throughout the fast on Instagram. Uh, now I've kind of switched it. It was really disruptive of my family life to do Sunday night shows. So um, it started out whimsical. They have become like a full-time job, <laughs> not really, but uh, sun Tuesdays are much better for family and I do this from 6 to 7 on the East Coast, and as soon as 7 o'clock hits, I hop in the car, go pick up my son from wrestling practice, and we drive home. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I am going to have some ketones here, and I like putting bubble water in my ketones. I don't drink them normally, but I try to show people that if you're drinking uh, ketones in a can, you should be able to raise your ketones that you're measuring. Uh, it is uh, a valuable part of not just improving uh, or proving that the the product works, um, but um, that measuring measuring for your own health uh, and looking at how well it does improve your numbers is a, a way to measure, I think, the quality of uh, the, those ketones. All right, so as I, um, before I get to some of those reboots, uh, again, uh, there are a few things that are in this show that I think will be valuable. Uh, we'll try to tie all those together by the end, but if you've got questions along the way about something you're struggling with, a symptom you've got, please type it in and we'll try to cover it at the end. Uh, that's where we end every show answering several of your questions. So thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Okay, um, I have a couple of other announcements. Um, um, one of them is um, that we are on, we had uh, our third, is it our third? No, it's our fourth um, support group here in Tampa. Again, I encourage people to be part of a support group. Uh, today was our fourth group, uh, and it is something I offer free to the community that I live in. I've had lots of you write in asking if I'm going to Zoom it. 
no <laughs> zooming uh, was a really important part of covid but i am really about making a community of people that are trying to support one another that check in and i'll tell you i i've i'm really excited about the people that i've been able to to be introduced to because they got up super early uh this support group starts at eight o'clock here in tampa and it's not like eight o'clock consult dakota where you don't have a uh a, a traffic to fight they have to get up and fight traffic like i do <laughs> and they've just been great honestly they show up uh they're getting up some of them are driving one and a half to two hours to come and be part of that support group um but they must find it valuable because they've come three three or four times now and really what i'm learning is i get real people in front of me at different parts of their journey uh, and I get to hear stories that remind me why I started a support group which it's for me it's selfish I like to have people uh, that I'm accountable to and not just my husband because <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't always lead to a happy marriage <laughs> but also just to be in a part of a group where I get to find teachable moments I said <laughs> that their attendance enriches this show because I will use some of their stories or some of their struggles uh, as a way to kind of weave into some of the lessons that we're teaching here. All right, so on this uh, reboot, um, I'm going to stop one other place before we hop into the reboot series. Um, and that one is here. So on my website, uh, bozmd.com, I will, I'll share a couple little personal things that today was, a, I don't know, I just had a tougher day. I was trying to find um, some creative energy to, to do some writing. And between the rain and I think just a little lonesomeness of uh, the hardest part about moving at my age is that my friends um, are were a huge part of my life. And it was easy to connect with um, friendships that had been around for 20, 30 years. And um, so there's a little bit of lonesomeness. I get to put uh, some antidote to that lonesomeness this week when my, my husband uh, and his best friend and her, th that couple uh, are meeting us in Miami to go see Billy Joel. So it's like the first adult activity I have. I am going to miss a wrestling tournament for my son, which is almost sinful. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking, gosh, I wouldn't miss that you know, tournament um, or in a in a past life, I would have had my, my, my parents go watch him wrestle. So uh, I'm headed to Miami to watch Billy Joel and abandoning my teenage son at his own wrestling tournament. But I think he'll be fine. And I'm really looking forward to the familiar faces that I've missed. Uh, these friends have been ours for years, and I'm, I'm totally excited. I'm like counting down to Friday. I feel like I'm like going to camp or something. Uh. But it's also why... You saw those numbers on my on my check in there um, because I know I'm gonna probably have some real carbs <laughs> on in Miami. Uh, I don't know um, if I'll have wine, but uh, it's been a while, so I'm doing a really good job before <laughs> so that I have the grace and um, space to to also do what I uh, I hope to do with my friends, which is hang out and not think about ketones. But I wanted to show you something um, that when I'm feeling down, I don't know if anybody's ever done the, uh, we did it as a Bible st study called the, the Five Love Languages. And when my husband and I did this, um, it was probably 10 years ago now that we did that. Apparently one of my love languages is words of affirmation. I like, uh, you know, hearing praise about things that I did. And so today when I went to um, uh, to look at, just you know say all right how can i get inspired that what i do on this channel what i do on these online courses i mean it's a lot easier to see what your your work has an impact when you are meeting the patient and you're um, seeing them one-on-one -on -one. Um, and even when you share their struggle it is that privilege of being a physician so as i've put a lot more time towards writing content and finding uh, interesting ways to teach this information that i really think can help people like it helped my parents, um, I, you can get discouraged. So I went and I read a couple of the reviews from the Brain Course. So I wanted to show you that if you're on the page and you look at this button here that says buy the online courses and you click it, um, it will take you to the two main courses. But under the Brains course, there's this little star right there. Um, and if you push that, it takes you to the review page. Um, and 
let's see this is a review page here we go and i'll just gonna hop down to i just wanted to say thank you thank you thank you for karen who took the online course this last week this last um class um the brains course and um she she had she just writes the best review i'm not going to take time to read the whole thing because but it is wonderful that she was really hesitant to put the money into um, a course because i am looking for leaders uh, to teach this to in hopes that they teach other people um, but one of the best moments is when as you start to heal yourself you spread that information to other people and they get healthier and that's truly what i my goal is here on this channel is to give as much free content as much information as i can and then those concentrated areas um, where she kept looking around her life. Each week I learned something new uh, and what, um, what can be repaired neurologically. Uh, another person would, I knew would come into my mind and uh, went on my help list. What if they knew what I knew? What if they know what I know? So during the, hor the course, she actually taught her husband how to meditate with some data, which is what a Muse headband, uh, I teach about that in the course and um he she is sleeping better and he also is meditating uh, on his own initiative found that um if the, the improvement in his sleep by what she learned in the course and the techniques she found have really been um just a way to pay it forward that her health has been improved and she's in help she's helping that of her uh, husband so i just want to say thank you for writing that review there's several others there but that one really touched my heart today um the other place that I try to stop before I head off into the lesson is I, I have a personal goal that um, and I didn't have these goals when I wrote the book. When I wrote the book, Anyway You Can, I didn't uh, I don't think I had ever left a book review on Amazon. I'm just saying. And so I self-published this book. It sold over 100,000 copies um, and it only got that. I only got that kind of sales as a I don't have a marketing team. I don't have a um, there's no Simon & Schuster that's promoting my book. It's you, it's you. And so this is any way you can. And my personal goal is to get it to 3,000 reviews on uh, on Amazon. And we're so close, we're like 70 uh, reviews away. And this week, three more came in. We were at uh, 2930 last week. And I am not gonna do the other book reviews. I'm just gonna do this these three because they were so good. Um, so I am going to read what uh, Leah said. And she said, we have purchased, <laughs> this is my favorite, we have purchased and given away over a dozen copies of this book. It is, first of all, an interesting story of a woman and her dying mother. But this woman is also a brilliant physician who thinks outside the box and is willing to do whatever it takes to save her mother's life. And in the process of doing that, she has saved the lives of thousands who have read the book and implemented the dietary changes that she prescribed for her mother. I was unable to put this book down. Dr. Bosworth does such a good, great job of showing the reader step by step what to do and how to do it. After seeing her mother's results and following the ketogenic diet, I had enough faith to think that it might work for me and some of my friends who were struggling with obesity and other health issues. I encourage everyone to buy and read this book. Uh, it has been a journey and uh, it has been a journey and not a quick fix and reminds me of a poem about Columbus's journey to the new world when all hoped seemed gone and when there were only shoreless seas the crew wanted to turn back and he said sail on sail on and on and Dr. Boz says keto on keto on and on in other words in due season you will reap if you don't give up you know, that is a family motto of ours um, that um, I, I'm rereading the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People with one of my sons. And he talks about a family motto. And my son, as an adult, young adult, is now saying, Mom, is that what you did when I was like seven years old and you taught me to say, we stick together and we don't give up as a family? Uh, and I just feel that that's a that family motto. So that she said that was wonderful. Um, Mary's review was almost as good though. Um, Mary writes in and says, um, this really opened my eyes. I've been on keto for a year, but I still have so much to learn. And this was a heap of education. On top of that, it was a nail biter of a story about the journey of a woman and her daughter, a doctor, fighting an awful disease any way they could. 
Unusual to see a doctor trained in conventional medicine be so quick to recognize when their medical training was leading down a wrong path. She includes the good, bad, and the ugly. And with just a few clues, she had the courage to take a chance of, on something different that just might work, using the way our bodies are designed as a method to help uh, it heal itself. She uses the best of conventional medicine with an understanding of the body's chemistry and healing through an effective nutrition. Bingo. Dr. Boz is a storyteller, a scientist, and a teacher. She obviously cares about people. I highly recommend this book. Thank you, thank you. And finally, the last one is by Erica, who says, I purchased a hard copy of this book in 2020. I liked it so much that I bought the Audible version in 2021. If you are thinking of trying the keto diet, if you are a beginner in keto, or even if you're advanced, get this book. It's informative, but more than that, it's a physician's testimony how she found keto, researched the science, and applied it to her family's real life situation with tremendous success. Whenever I hit a plateau or have a setback or just fall off the wagon, this book has been a good reminder and encouragement that I can do it. Side note, I found, a doc I found Dr. Boz on YouTube in January 2020. I, I've never been interested in keto because many of the people promoting it, it just seems so glam and superficial. I'm an African-American widow, working mom of two boys in college. In other words, I'm a real person with real world issues to manage. Dr. Boss's down-to-earth, data-driven, excellent explanations and training turned something that seemed out of reach into something totally doable. I went on to take the online course, which I highly recommend. Stick with it, Dr. Boz, or stick with Dr. Boz. She, she just won't let you fail on this journey. So again, I couldn't, I couldn't think of better reviews. So thank you. Uh, it is one of my favorite ways. People today at the, uh, at the support group said, um, how, how can, um, how can we thank you? And I'm like, first of all, you just, oopsie, that's not the one I wanted. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted either. Hold on here. That's giving away what I'm gonna do later. <laughs> Um, you know, how, how can how can I help you? And I said, you know, the best way that you can help me is to not just um, not just show up two hours. Um, um, I want to fix something here on my. Let's see here. Hold on, I have one problem that's happening here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so they show up to the support group and say, how can, how can we thank you? And I'm like, first of all, you just gave me something that, that is the most valuable, which was your time. Uh, and uh, then they say, but really, we'd like to say thank you. I'm like, the best thank you is a book review. <laughs> so I do appreciate that. Uh, I had no idea before writing a book how important those silly things were. So thank you, thank you. All right. So that was a little longer introduction than I usually do, but we are going to get to the steps of what happens on a reboot. So the reason we put the reboot, um, uh, or we put this time out to the reboot uh, on week four is that it is usually when we have several people who were thinking about doing the keto diet, they maybe didn't start till mid-January, or they started on the ketogenic diet and they've sputtered. They've really not found like, I don't know what all you people are talking about. I don't feel that good. And when that happens, there, is, there are some clues that you should be in tune to that I can help you with. Um, the ketogenic diet is a chemistry shift. It is very much about taking a body that is fueled with mostly glucose and to one that is fueled with 80 to 90% of the time, there are ketones available for those cells to burn a, a, a fat-based energy. Uh, when that when that chemistry is stable, like I've been doing this since you know about seven years now, whatever it is, uh, my body's pretty good at flipping from a glucose fuel to a ketone fuel. But at the beginning, that was not the case. Um, I could make it a couple weeks of doing well, and then I would need my I would you know I'd have to carb cycle, <laughs> which is meaning you're you're cheating, you're going off. It's really not keto then. Um, and although. Although I could get away with that because my health was had a few problems, my mother could not. She was fighting cancer. She needed to have a very strict anti-inflammatory uh, setting for her body to heal the way it did in that book. And um, I knew that on an intellectual level, um, but delivering that in my own body chemistry came back to a lot of 
I think it was psychological warfare of, oh my gosh, I, I, I comfort myself with these foods. And little did I know that I did it more often than I should. And um, I could kind of white knuckle it for a couple of weeks and then I would crash. And some of the reasons that the crashing happens uh, is also very commonly found in the first week or so when, when people get onto the ketogenic diet and they've got a they've got a lot of reasons to see an internal medicine physician, meaning they've got several medical problems, whether that's high blood pressure, struggling with insulin resistance of you know a, a thick middle, uh, insulin that's put storage in and inflamed their joints, so maybe some arthritis. Um, or maybe it's cholesterol, autoimmune problems, whatever. Uh, the key things in that first chemistry shift, that first week where we drop their carbs to 20, they do flip into a state of ketosis, and they're waiting for the joy ride that everybody's talking about, and they don't get it. Okay, so in those, in those people, um, first of all, either it happens at the beginning of that first week, or it happens more like what happened to me, which I could get into ketosis, but then I would need my... I would need a playtime. Like, I don't want to be this strict forever, do I? And of course, I've come around to saying, okay, there are very rare times where, like Miami, <laughs> where I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, think about carbs. I'm gonna be, uh, but I'm pretty healthy. And by Tuesday next week, I'm sure I'll be back into ketosis. I'll start my fast again on Sunday. Um, but that metabolism is healthy. And when people are shifting from a fuel base to a state of ketosis and they don't have that energy, um, I have some notes here. So number one, and we talked about this a little bit in my in our support group this morning, there were several people who have a lot of health issues. And although they will get to the point where they arrive at a what I call the, the, the good side of the ketogenic diet, um, let me show you, let me show this, um, Let's see here, go to this guy. Okay, so in, um, in this, um, this, um, this keto continuum, which the first book I wrote that you just heard about there was um, Any Way You Can. And although Any Way You Can had, uh, has great reviews and I, I'm very proud of it, um, it left out a lot when it comes to um, the, the, the steps I do in my clinic. So if you look at that section that's called beginner, this is where people get stuck and they don't get to the joy ride. The joy ride on the ketogenic diet um, is based on, um, hold on here, is based on when they get down to this baseline metabolism where we, we are, they're fat adapted, they are suppressed, their appetite suppressed, they're able to miss a meal, uh, and in that process, uh, they really do feel well. Um, I mean, baseline metabolisms in the keto continuum is the chemistry part where you can live here. I can talk about this thing that I'm going to do this weekend, and I know that I will be right back in ketosis next week. That did not happen overnight. I kept kept um, flopping back into the beginner stage, which would be keto continuum number three and four, because I never successfully really got over um, the, the, um, the truly being fat adapted, that, that ringing out of inflammation, which allowed my body to flip between these two fuels. I mean, it might have taken me a year and a half. It shouldn't have had I followed some of these rules. And I didn't quite appreciate some of the problems that um, really uh, sabotaged my progress. Um, so one of those, one of the bigger symptoms that happened in this first month, um, you know, two weeks is one way it happens, but a month is another place where we find people give up and say, it didn't work for me. Um, so number one is um, while you're figuring this out, uh, we know that the longer your body practices using a ketone, the better it gets at um, returning to ketosis. So um, I wish I would have figured this out in my journey. I wouldn't have taken so long to get, to get steadily in a state of ketosis. Uh, and that is that when I was going to screw it up, uh, when I was in a, saying, I, I need to have my carbs, I need the carb cycle. And it was really psychological. It was really, really self-loving with carbohydrates um, uh, that I should have started drinking ketones as soon as I did that. Meaning the faster your body goes back into a state of ketosis, your cells, I didn't know this at the time, but your cells will use a ketone preferentially, meaning, uh, meaning it will prefer a ketone over glucose 
but the ketone has to be present. In people with insulin resistance or people with that, the high blood pressure or those several health problems that make this transition so rocky, um, they aren't gonna make ketones as abundant and they aren't gonna make them as long, meaning they're gonna not stay in ketosis as long because of that fluctuation of times when they're emptying that stored glycogen, that stored sugar in their liver, emptying the stored sugar in their muscles, and it sends their sugars up, which sends their insulin up, and then it's this cycle that they keep fighting and they never really get to be, in, I mean, they would not have a Dr. Boz ratio of whatever mine was here in the teens um, be, because they're fighting uh, the insulin and sugars that are fluctuating. And every time those sugars go up a little bit, their body stops making ketones. So they do not get that extended time in a state of ketosis, which makes it like they do the restart over and over and over again. So one of the things that I recommend is number one, if you fall off the wagon, do not be afraid of supplements. Do not be afraid to drink your ketones for this season while you figure it out. And it comes back to that the cost of not being keto is the growing of the inflammation, the growing of chronic diseases in the brain, in the heart, in their kidneys. And I want you to reverse that. That reversing is a constant state of ketosis that you do naturally. But there's this season where people have acquired so many medical problems, some they don't even know about, that if I could bathe their body in ketones, and then they got to figure out the social part of how do you stay in a state of ketosis most of the time with all the temptations that are around. And I, I say it is not for the faint of heart. That, that emotional maturity uh, is something I've, I've really worked on. I don't, um, I, I'm not a perfect example, but a higher amount of, um, of time spent in ketosis is linked to the psychology of not using food to rescue you emotionally. And that's not something I can prescribe, but I can get you the ketones and say, all right, now the step two of what gets, so number one was don't be afraid of those ketones. You will not be on them forever. But number two, get yourself to a support group. Uh, those emotional ties of watching, even in four weeks, watching what this group of people um, is praising each other about and yet struggling, uh, they are they are not exclusive. The, the The people who struggle one week are the ones who are praising the the other people the next week, and and I think that's human. Uh, that's what that what that's what attracts um, anybody to stay in the course through a valley of struggles is they have another example that says you know if they can do it I can do it. Uh, those words of encouragement, I don't think I'm the only one whose love language is words of affirmation, words of affirmation, uh, words of praise. Uh, but being in a group of people where you share that and saying, you know what, I didn't do it perfectly. Uh, I, I haven't gotten back to my 72 hour fast and I, I tried to do it last week and I didn't do, <laughs> didn't do it last week either. But walking into a group of people where you watch them, you know, their struggle is different than mine, um, but it's still the struggle that requires that community to help you through that. So I know a lot of people say, ah, oh, I don't need an online course, and COVID really wrecked a lot of people's desire to be around people, and I don't blame that. But what is amazing to me is as soon as they, in this little bitty group, you know, 15, 20 people that, are, that show up on, um, on my support groups on Tuesday mornings, they, there's already a connection to say, look at how much better his journey is because he showed up and said, I screwed that up, but I'm doing better. I know you asked me to eat sardines and I didn't want to do it the first week, but I've now eaten sardines three weeks. This lady that is wonderful in her journey, trying so hard to say, I really want to reverse all these problems. And um, and it's not, it's not going to happen tomorrow. She's going to have to stay the course in order for that to happen. But it's that encouragement of getting into a support group that really is important in, in your struggle. Um, you know, one of the things I did in Sioux Falls and I'm trying to reestablish here is I'm going to, I picked a day of the week that really worked in my schedule and worked in my family so that I can hold a support group. And I can, I mean, in five years of running that support group in South Dakota, I think I missed twice and they were both for funerals <laughs> that were pretty important to me. Um, when I look at uh, not wanting to, um, to, wanting to be that place where for a season, they needed support, and they were able to land at this free support group, ask a few questions, watch how other people have either improved their health or stumbled and are trying again. Um, but that connection, a big deal. So number one was BHB. Number two was a support group. Number three 
is one of my favorite things. And I actually did this this past weekend. Um, I, uh, uh, when people are really struggling, but they are eating the way they're supposed to, and they are, um, they, they you know, maybe got a support group, but they've got the, oh, doc, I just, I, I have a headache. I don't feel well. I know everybody chirps about this keto diet feeling so darn good, but I don't feel good. I don't have that feeling. I will, I will vote for magnesium as the culprit, the first, the second guess, the third guess, the fourth. I will, it is magnesium until proven otherwise. And of course, if for any of you out there that have started the ketogenic diet, it's not, it's not an easy thing on your gut. Um, many times we're taking a very high volume of food and we're slamming it down to, you know, hardly any fiber because those are carbs, um, a lot of fat and a, a bowel that's used to being stretched as its signal to move the stools along is no longer getting that stimulus. Um, and, or the opposite, your guts have not seen this much fat in decades, maybe since you were breastfed. And now the enzymes and the secretions needed to digest those fatty um, foods and absorb them, well, they don't start overnight. It takes your bowels a, a week or so to get, to get back up to speed. And if it's a disease, if it's you know irritable bowel or inflammatory bowel of any sort, it can take them a month before they're really making enough of those digestive enzymes to handle this high of a fatty diet. So their stools are loose and they're not, they don't feel good. So when your stools are that loose, you're definitely leaking magnesium out that leaky gut, out that um, inflamed gut. And if I ask you to swallow magnesium through a pill or um, there's plenty of problems with that. Uh, magnesium is a laxative, uh, so you put too much in at once and it's going to give you even more diarrhea. Um, if you do a lot of the slow mags, you have to still have so much magnesium uh, to, to really replace what you're missing that I, I'm not the first one to point out you're going to have a heck of a time catching up. Um, as many, many of the nurses out there know, the, that you, there are some things you can do uh, for magnesium if somebody's, um, you know, some of the symptoms of magnesium aren't just the headache and the kind of low mood or s low energy, it's muscle cramps. And so if you're having muscle cramps in those first two weeks, that's almost a, uh, you are stamped with the approval, it is low magnesium, it is low magnesium, it is low magnesium. Um, and if you are, if you work on the obstetrics ward and you have moms coming in where they're their uterus is cramping and they're trying to go into preterm labor, one of the antidotes is that we put an IV of magnesium in, a magnesium drip, to get that muscle to calm down. And we'll get the mom stable and we'll get her resting and we'll get that uterus to not cramp anymore. And then we send them home and set the timer because the magnesium is going to fall short in a, you know, I mean, it's going to, it's not going to stay replenished in the state she's in because she's about to go into labor. Um, and so the magnesium will keep her from cramping for a while, but you'll, you'll have to continue to replenish it. Well, we're not going to hook you up to a magnesium drip. We're not going to be able to swallow a bunch of magnesium. The antidote for this is vacation in an hour, which our magnesium floats. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, I actually don't know if I posted it. I meant to post it. I went to a float in St. Pete called uh, St. Pete Salt Works. St. Pete Salt Works. Uh, anyway, it's the second time I've been there and they really were great. Um, um, but the business has about, I think, four or five um, uh, salt flo floats, and we, I, I, I had my son come with me. Um, is it me or is her voice low? I, you know, I got a little far, far away from the, the microphone, so let me bring it a little closer there. Um, so it, when I look at uh, the antidote for uh, pushing um, magnesium into somebody's body, uh, especially when they're not feeling good in that first two weeks of, of uh, first two to three weeks of keto, nothing beats a magnesium float. So if you haven't done this, I call it vacation in an hour because um, there's enough magnesium in that water. It, it is super saturated. The salinity or salt level of that water is so dense that you float, kind of like the dead sea salt, dead sea that's so salty that you float. Um, and uh, when the improvement, uh, uh, so when you get in one of those salt baths, I thought absorbing magnesium through your skin was fake news. I didn't think that was possible. So I went and looked it up and there are, there are only about two studies that really look at pre and, and post uh, intravascular magnesium, uh, like right 
as they're doing it right after the float. It's a difficult thing to measure because of how quickly that body sweeps the magnesium intracellularly. So you'll keep it that blood level pretty stable. It's what makes magnesium very difficult to measure in your blood. If your magnesium is low in your blood, you have been low for a long time, you have serious problems. So do not wait for the blood test to show you that it's low. If you add magnesium to someone and they don't need it, they'll pee it out <laughs> or you're, they'll mineralize it in your bones. But when you're in a magnesium float, the amount of magnesium that was replaced in patients, it did wa far better than any of the prescriptions I could provide. Um, any, I mean, I could have written a magnesium drip, but that's a lot of risk. Um, so watching to see how quickly they felt better uh, and I think it was a couple of layers of feeling better. Number one, it replaced magnesium. That, great, that's awesome. But just like if I was gonna admit that uh, young mother, uh, soon to be mom, uh, for preterm labor, you put the magnesium in and it, it does, you know, it goes right back down until you get your storage tank a little better. And more importantly, until you get your body healed enough that you're not leaking out some of these minerals as fast as you're trying to take them in. So one of the, um, one of the um, uh, prescriptions I used to like write out for the patients were, I want you to do five magnesium floats in, in 15 days. Uh, sometimes I'd try to get them in two weeks, 14 days. And really what you're doing is you're, you're putting them in an environment that, um, that does some detox because it's another place where um, if I can get multiple check marks for a patient where, yep, I'm raising their magnesium. That's the medical part that I'm really working towards. But there is also an emotional and spiritual process of when you uh, go to one of these floats, they're designed to have some nice soft music and like the ones that, at the Salt Works had some cute little twinkle stars on the ceiling. And about 10 or 15 minutes into the float, the lights shut off and the music stops. And so you are floating, so you aren't touching anything. And then there's no sound and it's pitch black. So you have no sight, no sound, no touch. It's like you're floating in outer space universe. But what happens is this place where you can shut down the noise in their brain. And I wish I could have a prescription for patients to do that more often. That um, personally, I like to, you know, pray prayers of gratitude when I'm laying there saying, what is it that I'm stressed about? And why can I, why, why should I find the things that are more, I'm more thankful for? Um, but it also links back to um, that space to just stop the noise in your life. And when I look at people that are really stressed about the not feeling good in that first few weeks of keto, yes, I want their chemistry to be better. Yes, I want them to lose weight, have less inflammation, prevent the chronic illnesses, reverse them with autophagy, get into ketosis and feel wonderful. But all of that is minor compared to the mental shift that needs to happen as we detox from a very intense life, a very stressful life. And I find that combining that low magnesium and prescription for several floats in a short period of time, they really do get the space and time to analyze what's really pushing your buttons. What, what ways could you find to improve this ketogenic diet? And that's not, uh, that's not just counting the carbohydrates. Um, so as, as I look at people um, journeying through the, the first few hiccups of a ketogenic diet, I tell them, drink ketones until you figure it out. Find a support group, even if it's only online, but find a support group. Um, but number three is take the time out. Even if you're not low on magnesium, I would tell you to go get a magnesium float. I do not own any stock in magnesium floats. I don't have any connection to them. I just can't believe how many things get better uh, from their sleep um, to again, helping with that anti-inflammatory, really pushing salt in the right direction and helping their kidneys to flush out some of it right the next day, but also to replace the magnesium for uh, the improvement of their gut health and uh, sustaining in a state of ketosis uh, and not having so much inflammation intravascularly as well as in their system. The final thing that I, um, I'm gonna do a very quick uh, share on is, um, let's see if I, oh, let's go to this one here and let's go to, Okay, so this, uh, this final thing is the Chronometer app. 
Uh, now this is projected on from my iPad, so I'm gonna try to see, I, um, I wanted to show you a couple things. So that's January, so let's go to the 25th, that's today. So the 25th, I don't know if you can see that little bitty, um, that little bitty sign there that says fasting. Um, but this is the chronometer app. Uh, I don't, I thought I could have this, uh, the, um, let's see here if I can pull that down just a little bit, there you go. I thought I could have the, um, the logo on here too, but it looks like that's not gonna show up. So a chronometer, again, uh, is not something, it's free, it's an app, but it really keeps good track of what you're eating. So today I'm fasting, and let's go back another day, so that was January 25th, so then on the, oopsie, wrong way. On the 24th yesterday, I did a really good fast. Again, I didn't have a snitch, um, had some, uh, you know, get home and go straight to bed. <laughs> practically. Um, uh, on the 23rd, I had all kinds of reasons to get a little upset because our, our wonderful Tampa Bay Buccaneers no longer had, uh, they, they, they lost at the last few seconds. Um, so, but I did stop eating somewhere around six o'clock. Uh, so um, if, if you look though, uh, when I'm logging into my chronometer app and looking at um, keeping track of foods, I, I don't do this as often as I used to but it's a really important process for somebody who is beginning the ketogenic diet that when when they come to group or when they ask me questions about how are you uh, i mean why, why am i not feeling better uh, i push them to to show me the charts of how many grams of carbs total grams of carbs have you had in a day and when you look at um that one's for the 19th and i think if i swipe this way i can uh, oh, this is the charts too. So I can show you the different kinds of macronutrients that were on the 21st. Um, those, the, the fat is the red, uh, the protein is the green, and the carbs are the light blue. Um, I'm, I'm very careful to point out that on a ketogenic diet, using that chronometer app gives you very solid evidence-based data about what you're eating and what those foods actually have in them. Um, there was a couple of folks from group this morning that said, yeah, I started following the chronometer app and I thought I was under 20 carbs, but I was not. So it's a very good um, um, additional uh, way to reboost your boost, uh, your keto reboot. And that is just go for five days and log in your data to chronometer app and watch to see how many carbohydrates you're actually consuming. Uh, this app is what I highly recommend because of its accuracy for measuring carbohydrates. Notice I'm not asking you to mark fa to measure how many fat grams you're having. I am not asking you how many to measure how many grams of protein you're having. I'm simply saying you must get those carbohydrates less than 20 and then eat till you feel full. So with that combination, people write in saying, I don't think I'm getting enough protein. I'm like, well, how many weeks are you keto? And they're like, four. I'm like, why are you counting protein? Stop doing that. And, and the reason why is you, you are, there is a big picture chemistry set that we are trying to fix at the beginning of a ketogenic diet. It is all of that shift in chemistry that changes why, uh, why they feel the headache, why they have low energy, why they can't feel that, um, you know, keto euphoria that everybody else is talking about and it has everything to do with what insulin is doing in the background insulin listens mostly to carbohydrates the protein and the fat will get to when you're at a later stage if you're rebooting keto i do not want your print in your finger i want you peeing on your in ketone strips counting total carbohydrates sipping on ketones if you're struggling finding yourself a support group and going for a keto float, I mean, uh, not a keto float, a magnesium float, which we should call a keto float because you're gonna feel better if you're on keto. Um, so that gives the, the overall for what I was hoping to cover tonight on, uh, the, um, on the podcast or on the show. Uh, we are gonna take time for uh, some questions, a little less time than I was thinking. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, let's go here and um, pull this over here. Okay, so. Oh, you got lots of good questions people are writing in. So let me uh, get over to the questions. And maybe even if we go over a little bit, I think it's worthy of that. All right, so January 25th, Cindy writes in and says, oops, Daisy, a little bit too high. Uh, you, stay, you stay 23 and one if you feel good here. Um, I think she meant to say, should I, oh, should you move in and out of ketosis? Okay, if somebody is 23 and one 
and they are at their metabolic health, like they're at their, their right weight. Uh, if they're doing this for autophagy reasons, their brain is working well, they have good energy, they're sleeping well, they're at a very good level of health, I would still tell them, don't go in and out of ketosis. <laughs> Moving in and out of ketosis, well, it's going to happen because you're human. Uh, it's going to happen because people screw it up. Um, I mean, I've been to going to enough keto groups and enough patients over 20 years that people do well for a season and then they don't. But to purposely plan to go out of ketosis weekly, uh, that's silly. If you're feeling good at 23 and 1 and you're, you've reached your goals, then praise God and stay there. Awesome job. Um, but I would not, I mean, especially um, what happens when you go in and out of ketosis is you evoke that attraction for the inflammation to return to the areas of the body that have been injured. Uh, if you look at uh, some of the people who've been keto for a while or um, they do what I'm going to do this weekend, which is I'm not going to worry about being keto. I'm going to be with my friends. We're going to have a nice meal um, and I will go out of ketosis. But when I first was going in and out of ketosis, uh, when I would screw it up and go out of ketosis, it, any place that I had swelling, it would it would be right back into my system. Like I, I couldn't take the ring off of my finger um, the day after adding back carbohydrates. And it's because that that potential space where the fluid or swelling ends up when you're out of ketosis instantly refills in a body that's not truly healed. So Cindy, I would not recommend going in and out of ketosis. I would say be there as best you can and stay there. And if you have a weekend with your friends in Miami trying to see Billy Joel, enjoy it and then get back into keto. All right, Karen Lee writes in um, and says, Dr. B, how long does it take for the vitamin D levels to lower? Currently, I'm at 212. Okay, so I laugh at 212, not because um, uh, of any, I mean, when people do a great job of replacing their vitamin D, psh, praise God. Uh, but you can probably stop taking supplements <laughs> and then I would recheck things in six months. You could probably recheck it in three months, but personally, I would, I would just say, Whatever you've been supplementing on, your body's doing a much better job. Um, I find that sometimes the vitamin D levels, especially if they're in a, a really um, more rapid weight loss, that as they are emptying several of those uh, fatty reserves, vitamin D is a fat-based molecule that I, I can't find another explanation for why they were very low, very low, very low, very low, taking the supplements they had been keto and then they went through this rapid weight loss and their vitamin D went up. And it's not the vitamin D that's going to cause you to be toxic and you're going to lose your mind. Don't don't stress about that. Uh, but recheck it. And it is why I, I'm very adamant about um, if you go to bozmd.com and you look uh, at, uh, at the products I offer, I co-market the vitamin D home kits because I think they're so valuable. They're not the biggest money maker. I know they're expensive, but the cost of the testing and sending them in and doing all that stuff is something that is still part of um, um, the cost, but it's way cheaper than sending to the doctor, fighting with your doctor because your insurance won't co cover it that soon. Um, but I would still be judicious about when you do recheck. So her question is, how long? At 212, I'd, I'd stop all your supplements and I would still get sun. Sunlight is very good at activating your vitamin D. Uh, and then I recheck in six months. Good question. All right. Sandra says, once fat adapted, do you recommend lowering fat intake if you still have body fat to utilize? Why, yes. That is a very good question. <laughs> Let me show you this, uh, this printout here. Um, here we go. Not that one anymore. Okay, so uh, on the keto continuum, you will see that when we get into this next zone, like next week we're going to talk about um, keto, con you know, what happens with time-restricted eating. Then we're going to talk about when fasting really fits into that chemistry set. Uh, but this blue zone, they feel good. Uh, so when, when Sandra says, okay, if I'm fat adapted, what happens next? Um, and the workbook does a great job of saying, okay, so if you still are not at your body weight, go to the next step. So in, in this case, um, let's see here, I can pull this over here, uh, just move it off to the side actually. Um, if you look at this keto continuum here, um, when, when people step into 16-8, um, they, they do a time-restricted eating, 
and then we then we give them another rule. We say stay at 16.8 for, for a week. You got to do it perfectly for a week. And the workbook helps you track. Did you actually take care of the one skill I needed you to learn in Keto Continuum number five before you go to Keto Continuum number six? And then when they're at Keto Continuum number six, I'm like, all right, now do this next right thing. Because when people write in and say, you know what, I pee ketones, I, my, I check my blood ketones, they're at 0.5, but I've been keto for the last year and a half and I don't lose any weight. I'm like, well, it is a continuum. You are trying to take your metabolism and enhance it to the best level. And in order to do that, once you successfully keto adapt at this level, just like a runner who used to run one mile now wants to be in better shape and runs three miles, um, it, it doesn't extend that, oh, I fasted 36 hours, then I fasted 72 hours, now I'm fasting a year. That's not how this works. It is you live at this baseline metabolism, uh, which I, I like to call, uh, you know, these are the keto continuums number five, six, seven, and eight. This is where people live. And then if they still are saying, but I, I haven't reached my, um, I haven't reached my goal yet. My, I'm still not at my goal weight. Um, I'll say, well, then add in these other metabolic stresses and then go back to the baseline that you, that fits your life, that fits your skill level. Uh, it's when people really reach for that uh, 72 hour fast and they only have 23 and one and they have made their life so restricted that they then blow up all of their skills because a chapter of grieving or stress showed up and you know there isn't really a way that it it you know fixes itself it's a skill set that you advance and learn so when people say well what do I do now I have all this extra body fat I mean that is the benefit of what happens on ketosis is you've never had the ability to restrict food and tap into your fat-based resources not losing muscle mass not turning off your brain for a low metabolism but really keeping that metabolism at a strong burning energy consistently and that's what I explain in that keto continu continuum I was telling the telling the um the support group today that I did not make up the keto continuum. This is what patients taught me. Here's what you have to accomplish before you can do the next step. And then people will try to hop way down the line and do all these fancy things and they would blow up their metabolism and they would turn off their metabolism and they would feel awful. Uh, you need one tiny step and then the next tiny step. And so, yes, if you aren't at your ideal body weight, there are plenty of... Um, plenty of other ways to to improve that uh, and that they are the workbook does the best job of walking you through it step by step just keep turning one page of the workbook at a time Karen S writes in says my morning Dr. Boz ratio is still above 80 is that when I should be taking the BHB capsules no um, when you are looking at your Dr. Boz ratio uh, of 80 it means you are still insulin resistant this means your sugar is still too high it means your insulin is still too high again the Dr. Boz ratio is approximating what your insulin is doing and when it's above 80 it's a really good sign that you are still rather insulin resistant your BHB capsules will help bridge you during a time when you're not feeling well when you're trying to stay keto and you're falling off the wagon but if you're trying to reduce your insulin resistance um, I need you to examine where you're at on that keto continuum and go up one notch. Um, and sometimes if it's, um, we're going to talk about that over the next weeks, that just because keto continuum five and six are right next to each other, it doesn't mean you just turn one page of your life, uh, like you go in, you wake up on Wednesday and you do it all perfectly. Nope, there are some steps involved. So the place, remember the BHB capsules are the ones that do not have stevia in them. Um, it takes about eight capsules to equal one scoop of the stuff that I drink here um, eight or nine I mean it's a lot of capsules to be that to, for that much BHB but my husband is allergic to stevia when he is in need of ketones um, he'll take a handful of capsules and it's usually at a time where he's trying to get back into ketosis he's trying to you know not have the temptations but if you're just doing it to make your numbers look better, that's not healing. The Dr. Boss ratio is you measuring how well your insulin is really working. Um, so um, Kathy in Kansas, first of all, love that, uh, says, allergic to sulfur, what can I substitute for Epsom salt? So magnesium, um, magnesium chloride doesn't have any sulfur in it. So you can buy um, 
different magnesium is one mineral uh, and when you combine it with another one it makes a salt uh, one of those salts is magnesium chloride which i buy at walmart um, i'm pretty sure that i can't remember what magnesium it is that is used in the epsom salts but i don't know um, use use the one without sulfur in it is what i would recommend um, can can keto heal psoriasis absolutely <laughs> All right, I'm going to not uh, fully answer that one because uh, I have a whole podcast coming up about um, psoriasis. We're going to go back to here. I'm going to check my numbers at the end. And again, uh, 3.7 is hard to beat, so I wonder how that, I wonder if that'll make a difference on my, on my ketone, uh, uh, hold on here, on my ketone strips. Um, last, last week I ran out of battery. Um, there we go. All right. Uh, so I've got a blood sugar of 71 and the ketones are like 3.6 or something like that. So let's see how well we do um, checking him again. And um, there are a couple of other things that I do want. If you are having real troubles with uh, getting back uh, on the keto wagon, um, the email that Michelle wrote out this weekend, she and I wrote out a weekend. And again, the purpose of our emails have been to hook you up with all the free resources. Um, uh, so yeah, 2.7 is what that says. Oh, and this one had an error. Let me try that again. I, I'll, let me just recheck my numbers while I've got, I've got you captive. Um, where did I put those strips? There you go. Um, when I look at um, her emails, all of the free resources are what, are what we're trying to connect you to. Um, with Without um, the, the leftover reels that we had when we made that, uh, when we made the documentary, you would have no bonus episodes. So our bonus episodes are one of the things she connected you to over the emails this past week. And I really appreciate those of you that write back with a, a few words of praise about those emails. We're not um, keto, we're not um, a, a copyright specialist, <laughs> or whatever it's called where you write uh, email copy for a living. We are doing our best to, to connect you with the resources that we think are free and that people often don't find on the channel. So she's done a really good job. I'm just gonna check this again. Uh, she's done a really good job of just finding the places that she thinks were the best resources that she knew because she lived near me, um, but um, she thinks many people miss. Oh, I just did it again. Yeah. So, so that, uh, the, the ketone number is, uh, again, we've got a 3.7 at the beginning and then, oopsie, 3.7 at the beginning of the show and then a 2.7. And I still can't get my blood glucose to read. So at the end of the show, though, we will link uh, the, the playlist for those bonus episodes for those of you that are watching this on replay. And if you haven't checked them out, there is one specifically about the floats that uh, I, I teach her about it. And then we actually go to a float. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just take time to click through. And if nothing else, just look at what a float looks like. Because um, I, think, I think I love them. I think Michelle likes them, too. Uh, all right, let's see if we can get this glucose to work. All right, counting down. <laughs> it's not a glucose of 388. There's something wrong with my machine. <laughs> Let me do one more just to prove to you that it is not working right here. That's the, that is the, the fear of doing this live. <laughs> and it's one minute after seven, so my son is sitting outside the school waiting for me. So I really do need to hurry. <laughs> all right, one more time, checking my urine or my blood glucose hmm. okay 80 that makes more sense all right again that's a good teachable moment that when the numbers don't make sense keep checking these are not expensive strips Forecare care has done a great job at making a very reliable strip but there are humans involved <laughs> and rechecking always always uh, is a good idea uh, for those of you actually Tammy just made a comment there that she didn't get the email early uh, yet this week it should come out over a Monday, Tuesday. And for those of you that signed up on the website in the last two weeks for the email, we just caught the mistake that we weren't sending the emails out to the newly signed up people. So we're gonna fix that. But like I said, we're new at this and we haven't quite figured out how to fix that. So expect the emails uh, to those new people over the course of the next uh, week, or, week or two. 
All right, I'm Dr. Boz, improving your health one ketone at a time. I really appreciate you tuning in and check out that playlist uh, from the American Tradition for the bonus episodes if you haven't already. We will see you next week. Uh, and.